Hey everyone, this is Zach Armstrong from Lapcoats, and today I'll be showing you how to make an awesome Class E Tesla coil that's capable of playing crystal clear audio directly through its electrical arcs. If you're into Tesla coils, it's probably for one of three main reasons. Either you enjoy crazy high voltage displays, you're a wireless power fanatic, or you've seen the viral videos of these machines playing catchy music. Of course, there are also a few pseudoscience nuts out there who want free energy, levitation, and magical healing devices, but I'd say the vast majority of Tesla coil lovers are being drawn in by the sick jams. In the past, I made a universal solid state Tesla coil that could play music, but if I'm being honest, the way I went about it wasn't really the best. The main interrupter had to be switched off and a specialized pulse DC signal of some kind had to be fed in. Of course, this was my first real solid state Tesla coil, and music wasn't really my top priority at the time. Today though, I'll be designing a new coil that's specifically geared towards playing whatever music you plug into it. Now, going into this project, there were a few main features I wanted to incorporate besides just music. For one, I really wanted CW capability. CW stands for continuous wave, and with Tesla coils, this essentially means a constant output without interruption. Unlike interrupted sparks, CW sparks tend to appear as silent, white-hot bush discharges, and above roughly 6 or 7 MHz, these discharges tend to take on the characteristic plasma flame look. While it is possible to get performance like this with gate driver ICs, it's almost impossible without super tiny surface mount components. So to keep things simple, I chose to say below 5 MHz for this project. Another thing I wanted to try was ultrasonic interruption. For those who don't know, Tesla coils are interrupted to help keep the average power consumption low, but the peak power relatively high so the sparks can still be reasonably long without overheating the transistors. The downside is that these pulse sparks tend to be very noisy, so to fix the issue, I decide to interrupt my new coil at frequencies above the human hearing range. By doing this, we can keep the overall power consumption low while still maintaining the silence often associated with higher power CW operation. The last few things I really wanted in this Tesla coil were ease of assembly, low cost, and compactness. My last two solid state Tesla coils were awesome, but they were both on the more complex and expensive side of the spectrum. For this coil, I kind of felt like going back to the basics. A single MOSFET design, without the unneeded complexity of a gate drive transformer or IGBT half bridge. I couldn't just go back to the MOSFET Slayer exciters though, so for this model I went with a high efficiency Class E design. While this may sound more complex and intimidating, it's really as simple as placing a tuning capacitor across the MOSFET's drain and source pins. I'll discuss the functionality and tuning process in more detail later, as it's really quite amazing how the circuit manages to achieve such smooth operation. Now, at this point, there is one circuit that comes to mind which fits a lot of our requirements. Steve Ward's version of the Class E SSTC, which was based on his Micro SSTC. Overall, it's very simple. Antenna feedback is fed directly into a MOSFET driver IC, and that IC directly switches a single MOSFET. His design is also very simple when it comes to the Class E aspect, with only one tuning capacitor and the primary coil. This is in contrast to plenty of other Class E designs, which have a rather complex arrangement of inductors and capacitors that I quite frankly didn't want to deal with. You can all thank me later. Of course, at the beginning of my journey, I was still hoping to enter the high frequency plasma flame territory, so I swapped out the slower UCC 37322 using Steve Ward's design with the newer and faster UCC 27524, which Jan Mardis successfully used in his 7 MHz coil. Feeling confident in my design, I designed a PCB for the circuit and sent in an order to this video's sponsor, NextPCB. NextPCB is a quality PCB manufacturer that supplies quality PCBs at a fairly reasonable price, especially when you buy in bulk. They also offer free PCB prototyping, meaning your first qualifying order should cost you nothing aside from shipping. All you have to do is go to their website, which I've linked to below, click learn more, get an instant quote, upload your PCB Gerber files like I'm showing here, and make your way to the checkout. And if this is your first time signing up with them, you'll get a $100 coupon as a nice little welcome gift. Remember, your first order of a 1-4 to four layer PCB set is free, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity. Check out the video description below for more details. Now, as soon as I received my PCBs and parts, I set about building my first prototype. As indicated by the PCB, I decided to name this design Electra. What can I say, Tesla coil naming is a big tradition amongst coilers. Sadly, Electra 1.0 didn't exactly operate. Apparently, direct antenna feedback isn't really the best option with this design. I tried a bunch of different design ideas, including one with the gate drive transformer, and after a lot of trial and error, this is what I came up with. As you might be able to tell, my latest circuit is quite similar to Steve Ward's Class E, but it uses the faster UCC 27524 in place of the UCC 37322, and the original interrupter circuit has been swapped out for my own custom interrupter circuit, which can produce almost any pulse width or frequency desired, and play music when cranked up into the ultrasonic range. 
Additionally, this driver operates using an adjustable Schmidt trigger oscillator rather than antenna feedback or a pesky fixed frequency crystal oscillator like so many other designs. The Schmidt trigger oscillator is, in my opinion, one of the coolest things you can make from just three circuit components, and it can actually be adjusted to produce an incredibly wide range of frequencies. To do it justice and explain how it works, here's my good friend and fellow science YouTuber, Tate from BackMax Sci. Hey everyone, Tate here. Let me explain how the Schmidt trigger oscillator works. When powered on, the Schmidt trigger oscillator outputs 5 volts, or high, because its input is low, or beneath its threshold voltage. But there's also a capacitor connected to the input of the Schmidt trigger, which is slowly charged through the resistor, and the capacitor voltage rises until it reaches the threshold voltage of the Schmidt trigger. Now that the Schmidt trigger is at its threshold voltage, it has a high input and outputs low. Now that the Schmidt trigger output is low, the voltage on the capacitor will start to drain through the resistor, the opposite of the charging process. And as the voltage on the capacitor dips beneath the threshold voltage of the Schmidt trigger, the Schmidt trigger input is now low and the Schmidt trigger will output a high signal or 5 volts. And that's the first period of oscillation of your oscillator. So, uh, amazing, right? And the frequency of the oscillator is dependent on the size of the capacitor and resistor that you use because that controls how fast the voltage rises or falls at the Schmidt trigger. Pretty sweet, huh? To my knowledge, this is the first Tesla coil to use an adjustable oscillator of this type, so that's pretty cool. Talk is cheap, of course, so I soldered up the final version of my Class E driver, tuned it, and put it to the test. Here are my results. Pretty decent output for a single MOSFET, wouldn't you say? I know the output's kind of small compared to some of my other coils, but sometimes it's the small things in life that really speak to me. Huh, do you get it? To be fair, with a larger coil and a beefier MOSFET, this circuit could probably produce some fairly large arcs. Using a 500 volt rated MOSFET, I can run this device up to 75 volts without the heatsink ever getting hot, and with silicon carbide MOSFETs, I was able to crank the voltage up well past 120 volts. The sparks from this tiny 1.5 MHz coil can reach over an inch in size at just 60 volts, and they honestly look like flyback transformer arcs when struck against a grounded target. Perhaps the coolest part, though, is the fact that this circuit can drive basically any coil you throw at it, thanks to the adjustable oscillator. And speaking of tuning, I feel like now is as good a time as any to talk about how you tune this thing. Quick disclaimer, you'll probably need an oscilloscope for best results. I know this kind of sucks, and that's a bit of a deal breaker for quite a few people. Rest assured though, you can build and tune the circuit without a scope if you're patient, or perhaps crazy enough. To get a rough idea for the tuning of your coil, just plug the primary and secondary coil parameters into Java TC. For the uninitiated, Java TC is a free online Tesla coil calculator that is basically your new best friend. It will tell you the predicted resonant frequency of the primary and secondary circuits, and you want these two values to be pretty close together, although in the end, it won't really matter too much. Reality always has other plans, trust me. 
Once you have an idea of what your coil will look like, the next step is simple. Just wind the coils and install a resonant capacitor of the predicted size. For those interested, these are the optimal parameters for the coil I wound. Once assembled, it's time for the first test. Power up the circuit with about 12 to 24 volts, bring a fluorescent light bulb near it, and start turning the trimmer potentiometer. Stop when the light bulb glows the brightest. Please note that the secondary coil will likely resonate at any multiple of the resonant frequency. For instance, my coil will operate happily at both 750kHz and 1.5MHz, although the signal produced by the secondary is only ever 1.5MHz. If you have a scope, try measuring the secondary coil's output frequency by bringing the probe close to the coil like so. Then, connect the scope between the MOSFET gate and source and mess with the trimmer potentiometers until the frequency matches the measured resonant frequency. I recommend tuning the primary circuit slightly below the resonant frequency because the sparks tend to lower the resonant frequency as they get longer. For reference, my 1.5 MHz coil seems to be the happiest when tuned to 1.47 MHz. And now for the trickiest part, tuning the Class E part of the circuit. The Class E portion of this Tesla coil is simply the primary coil and the resonant capacitor that is connected across the MOSFET. If you want to tune your coil without a scope, all you have to do is adjust the number of primary coil turns until the MOSFET experiences little to no heating during operation. This, however, is imprecise and doesn't usually work too well. So crack out your two-channel scopes, Tesla coil fans, because it's time to tune your circuit the right way. First, connect your probe ground to the MOSFET source pin, and then connect the probes themselves to the gate and drain pins. Once hooked up, power up the circuit and check out the waveforms. Ideally, this is what you want to see. A square wave at the gate fully out of phase with a half sine wave coming off the drain. What we are trying to do is to get the MOSFET to switch on right as the voltage at the MOSFET drain hit zero. This is known as zero voltage switching and is the key to highly efficient MOSFET operation with minimal heating or transients. If your waveform looks like this, you probably need to add more turns to the primary coil, and if it looks like this, you need fewer turns. Pretty straightforward. And now for a few design tips to ensure optimal performance. For one, you want the primary and secondary coupling to be high, but not too high. A coupling coefficient of 0.25 or lower is recommended to avoid throwing off the Class E waveform. For reference, this is what the waveform might look like when the coils are overcoupled. Next, you want a good balance between resonant capacitor size and primary coil turns. For best results, you should have fewer turns on the primary coil and more tuning capacitance across the MOSFET. A higher capacitance tends to mean less voltage stress on the MOSFET, but keep in mind that primary coils with fewer turns allow higher currents to flow, which could cause other issues. I personally recommend finding a balance that results in less than 6 amps of current draw during uninterrupted operation, but you are welcome to go higher if you feel confident in your tuning and setup. One last thing to consider is the MOSFET's gate capacitance. At super high frequencies, more current is demanded from the gate driver IC to switch the MOSFET on and off, and if the gate capacitance is too high, your UCC27524 will overheat. Just something to keep in mind. And there you have it, everything you need to know about building your own Class E solid state Tesla coil. Thank you all very much for watching, I had a great time making this video, and I hope you all learned something in the process. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel. Trust me, I've got a lot of crazy videos coming out soon that you do not want to miss. And if you'd be interested in a free Class E Tesla Coil PCB, you should join my Patreon group. I'll be mailing the next two people to join a PCB of their very own, so sign up quick for your chance to win one. A huge shout out goes out to my brother in coiling, Ryan from the channel Magnet Assist. He created a spinoff of this circuit that runs above 4 MHz and produces the same size output as mine, but at a much lower voltage. His work also inspired me to make a few changes to my own design, so this project's success is due in part to his excellent work. Be sure to check him out, I have a link to his channel in the video description. I'd also like to thank Tate from BackMaxi for working with me on this project. I had a great time chatting and learning alongside him. His channel recently blew up, so you might already be subscribed to him, but if not, definitely go check him out. His work with stabilized plasma toroids and low pressure xenon is just out of this world. Plus, he should also be making his own video on this class E Tesla coil circuit at some point, which you don't want to miss. A huge thanks goes out to all the LabCodes patrons and all the people who support me and my work. This channel truly would not be where it is today without them. As always, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. LabCodes, out.